When using two-part adhesives and potting compounds, it's critical to follow some important steps to ensure that the physical properties of your end product are exactly the way you need them to be. Epoxies Etc. offers packaging solutions that eliminate the need to weigh and mix your product, but sometimes it's necessary to hand mix two-part epoxies, urethanes, and silicones. So let's take a look at the best way to mix your compound. First and foremost, safety is the number one priority. Make sure to use proper protective equipment and refer to your compound's safety data sheet for information on the proper gloves, safety glasses, ventilation, and other necessary equipment to use the product safely. Also, many epoxies, urethanes, and silicones contain fillers and should be thoroughly mixed prior to use. Take a look at our filler settling video for more information on this topic. Before we mix it up, there are a few things to keep in mind. Two component materials have been formulated with a specific mix ratio of part A to part B. Some ratios are simple one-to-one -one ratios, while others can be as high as 100 to 3. The technical bulletin will have the correct mix ratio and will provide other instructions, including a cure schedule. Using a volumetric mix ratio is not as accurate as using a weight ratio, and we therefore do not recommend measuring the two components by volume. All two component materials have a working time, or pot life. This is important information because some materials have only a few minutes of working time after they're mixed. The pot life should help you decide how much material to mix. Also, some products should not be mixed in large batches due to the possibility of a high exothermic reaction temperature. Always refer to the technical bulletin for this important information. So let's begin the process. In order to hand mix your two-part epoxies, urethanes, or silicones, you'll need the following basic tools. A scale. Mixing cups without ridges. Make sure these are plastic and not paper. A square end spatula. Make sure this is plastic or metal. And a calculator. The scale is important so that you measure by weight and not volume. Weight measurements are much more accurate and will help you mix it all up successfully. The mixing cups should not be made of paper because they can absorb moisture, and some products are sensitive to moisture, especially urethanes. Also, some paper cups are waxed, and the wax can be scraped off during mixing and end up in the adhesive or potting compound. Avoid cups with ridges because material can get stuck in the ridges and not get mixed into the system. A square-ended spatula will make it easier to get the material along the seam of the bottom of the cup into the mix. Make sure the materials to be mixed are at room temperature or approximately 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Place the mixing container on the scale and make sure the scale reads zero. Now, add part A first and note the weight. Next, add the appropriate amount of part B to the part A. Use a calculator if necessary to determine the correct amount. Mix the two components with a spatula using a smooth blending motion to evenly distribute the part B into the part A. Make sure you avoid whipping air into the mix. A useful technique to make sure unmixed material does not get hung up on the walls or bottom of the mixing container is to transfer the mixed material into a second container and mix again. You should be ready to use your potting compound or adhesive when there are no streaks or pooling and the color is consistent throughout. Now you know how to properly hand mix a two-part adhesive or potting compound. For more tips and tricks and knowledge that sticks, visit the Epoxies Tips and Tricks page at epoxies.com slash resources slash technical tips. Thanks for watching.